Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is John with Education Solutions Online and in today's video I would like to show, mainly this is for my students, how to create a Google form and collect survey uh, uh, data. So you'll send out your survey and you'll collect your data for your primary research papers, but this could also be applicable to uh, some teachers who want to use this as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with this video and I will show you exactly how you can um, create your, your Google form and then send it out and then I'll show you exactly what it looks like uh, when you start to collect your data. So what you'll do first is you'll log into your Gmail account, you'll open up Google Drive, and then you'll come over here to where it says New. And there we go, so we'll bring this up and you see where it says Google Forms? You'll click right here and you'll create a new Google Form. So I've got one that I've already set up and what I like to do is I like to have my students put in their student number and then uh, their name, John Doe, Jane Doe, whoever that is. And then they'll, they'll put this up here so that I've got this listed in the very top as well. And then down in the description, this is where you would put your, uh, the, the description of your survey of, or your study. Okay, so the very first one here that you uh, will do, um, and I, I'm going off of what is in the textbook that I use, and in the textbook from National Geographic, uh, currently I'm using one's the basic steps to writing research papers and I think it might be a little bit outdated because it just says male female and prefer not to say um, so I actually included some uh, some of the other uh, genders that are that are listed I I'm apologize if I'm leaving anybody out I don't intend to do that um, but uh, if you set up your your first part where it says to which gender do you most identify uh, someone can choose uh, the uh, the gender that they most identify with. Um, Next up here, so what we can see, this is, uh, uh, well, let me go through the, the list of the questions here first, the school or the university name, the year in school, and then we've got uh, some sample questions here that I should get into later. Now, um, the first part here, so with this one here, we can see once we add in a new question, and you can find this right here where it says add question. So if you were to add this one in, uh, this will pop up here and you'll get, let me just show you real quick. Uh, so you'll get this one. This is what it looks like right here. It's a blank question. And then with this drop down menu right here, you can choose from a short answer paragraph, multiple choice checkbox, drop down, file, upload, linear scale or Likert scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox, date, and time. So you have a lot of different choices here. Now, this is what it looks like when it's blank. Uh, I'm going to delete that part here. And what I chose with this first one is a multiple choice question. So uh, someone would come in here, they would choose uh, what gender they identify with. Um, and then I've got with this one here, this is a short answer. Okay, so they'll type in the, uh, the university name. The one down here, this is a drop down. So I'm just showing you some of the different, um, the different choices you have for your questions that you can create. So the year in school, I put this as a drop down and I'll show you what it looks like when um, when I preview it. And then in this part, uh, with the next one here, so I added a new question. And then it says, do you agree with people? This is an, an example question that I got from one of my students here. Um, do you agree that people should be required to wear seat belts while driving or riding in a car? And so this one is a Likert scale. And what I prefer to do is do a one through six. And this makes someone have to Kind of sway towards either they strongly disagree or they strongly agree uh, they'll have to go to one side or the other here whereas if you do a one through five someone can choose a three right down the middle and kind of give the uh, i don't really care um so i prefer to to get this one in my uh in my likert scale here so that's why i chose one through six now in um in this part here if you look at this let me click on this here so this is my linear scale i should say um i typed in my question and then you can choose the numbers between one and six. I think you can actually do a zero as well. Uh, but I chose one to six, and I put in strongly disagree would be one, and strong, sorry, yeah, strongly disagree is one, and strongly agree is six right there. So that's how I set up my linear scale. Now, moving along here, I've got my, um, uh, this is a checkbox style. Let me show you here. So we got checkboxes. So this is referring to um, a cell phone. I had another student do a, um, a research project about cell phone use. 
And then what features are most important to you when you purchase a new phone? Check all that apply. This means that it's not just a multiple choice question, but the uh, people can choose every one of these if, if it applies to them. Okay, and then finally, I set up in this one here, this is a paragraph. So this is like an open-ended question. So they can type as long as they want with this one. Or they can type an essay if they want to. It's a long answer text right here. And um, uh, this is uh, allowing you to collect your qualitative data. Okay, so I've set up all my questions. Again, you come over here to where it says add question. And that's where you can add in your new questions for your survey. So let's have a look at the preview. Now we can come over here to our preview. This is what it looks like when you send it out. So if you were to put this one in, uh, let's say they choose not listed, um, their university name, uh, the University of, let's say, Illinois. All right, and then let's say they're a senior, fourth year. Okay, do you agree? Uh, let's say that they, well, they don't really disagree. Well, they sort of disagree. Okay, um, and then all the features that apply, so they can choose multiple ones, let's say other as well. Oh, okay, so if they choose other, they can they can type in a uh, description here. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, this is where uh, you can type your long answer. Okay, and this is for the qualitative research. Okay, so once you get to the end and the person uh, filling out the survey, they would submit that. Okay, and then we can come over here. And um, I filled out a couple other ones. <clears throat> and uh, you can see the responses now. So with this one here, uh, we can see the uh, a pie chart. So if we come back to our questions, a question that is a multiple choice will give you a pie chart that looks like this. Okay, um, this one was a fill in the blank. Um, this was a short answer right here. So you've just got your, your um, answers here. Uh, you're in school, I believe this one is a drop down. Let me check on that. You're in school, that is, yes, that's a drop down. Okay, so that's gonna give you a pie chart. Now with this one here, do you agree that people should be required to wear seatbelts? This is my linear scale or my Likert scale right here. So this one is going to give you a bar chart right here. Now with the multiple check boxes <clears throat> right here, what features? Um, check all that apply, uh, features of a new phone, check all that apply. This one is going to give you, we've got a bar chart right here. Okay, so, and then the final one was a, uh, this was a long answer. So um, this is where the respondents, I said uh, that they can, they can type as long as they want. This is if you're collecting qualitative data. So this is what you would do. It's a little bit more difficult, um, unless if you have some software to do sentiment analysis. I think it's, it's good to put this into your survey, um, but I would stick to, if possible, at least for my students now, I would stick to these multiple choice, drop down, uh, linear scales, uh, Likert scales here, um, and then also the checkbox. Now it doesn't hurt to put these in uh, with the uh, open-ended questions if you want to collect some qualitative data. But this is how you've got your, um, this is how you can get your information here. And let's say for instance, if you want to put this one in, let's say that this was, uh, if you, agree or disagree, this is our Likert scale. Now look at this one here. If you come to your response and you've got this form comes up here, it says copy the chart. So you can copy this chart. It'll say it's copied to clipboard. And then you can go and do a control, or sorry, right, or you can right click on this uh, on, your, um, on your Word doc or on your Google doc, you can right click on it and you can paste it into your Word doc. Um, or your, your Google Doc, however you're, you're writing your paper. Now that will give you, that will allow you to paste that into your, uh, into your paper, but you have to make sure that it remains APA compliant with APA 7th right here. So a very good website that you can use is called uh, the OWL Purdue. It's the online writing lab from Purdue University. 
and this will show you exactly how you go, how you can set up your charts. So you you will have to do a little bit of editing with this. If you take it from your let's see if you take it from here and you copy this, um, it's going to bring up this information with the question, and you'll see like three responses. So you may have to do a little bit of editing with that when you paste it in, just to make sure that it's APA seventh compliant here. Now, one other thing that you can do once you have all of your responses come through, you can see this green button right here, this, uh, this green box with a white cross here. It says View Responses in Sheets. If you click here, this will open up your spreadsheet here that has all of your responses. So if you have anything that has to do with, if we come back here, uh, let's say, for example, this is a good one. If we got our qualitative research question down here at the bottom, uh, this will come through at the very end here. So do you think uh, this, yeah, so here it is. Please explain in detail. Um, so this is where your respondents will come through. Now you can take these responses here and that's where you can, if you know how to, uh, you can run sentiment analysis or you can actually just read through all of the responses and decide if it's positive or negative and, and get a feel for what your responses are. Um, so that's uh, that's another really good way to um, to be able to take all of your survey data and really put it to use in your primary research paper. So that's really important here. If you ever have a question about it, you can ask your teacher um, or you can just refer to the Purdue OWL, the uh, online writing lab. So it's a very good website to use. I highly recommend it. And uh, what else do we have here? Oh, when you get ready to send this out, you can see this big purple button right here. It says send. Um, you would click on this one right here and then what you're going to do is you'll find a link and you shorten the link and you'll click on copy right there. So once you have that copied, you can, um, you can set it up for your teacher to email it to all of the students. Uh, you can send this out via your um, LMS. You can send it out uh, any way you like here. Just make sure that you can get people to respond to your questionnaire, your survey right here. So this is um, a very quick, brief way to create your Google Forms. I hope that this was helpful. Um, if it was, um, I really do appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you in some of the next videos. Thanks a lot and as always, adios.